as many of y'all seen, I changed clothing right here in front of you, just like some sort of change order. So I changed from my, uh, oh, here we go. Where's my, oh, oh I'm a suit too blanket. I was in a suit last night. Yeah. And uh, as you may or may not know, Americans are like this when they come to South, when they come to Africa. They go one place, like they start and say, Dakar, you know, Senegal. And they pick up some garment from there. Then they run down to, I don't know, Ghana, they pick up another garment there, right? They get to South Africa, and somebody makes them a nice little top, you know, and my African wife pimps it up, that kind of thing. And uh, what else do I have? Oh, she made this for me too. This is South African hat, there we go. Oh, I have to tell you one more thing. Forget the shoes. These are shoes that are made out of hemp. They're made out of hemp. Really good shoes. They're made out of hemp. You have hemp here. Now, the reason why I bring that up is because uh, you got a lot of hemp here. I know you're associated with marijuana, but yeah, 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 yeah. You have hemp here. And that means you can make clothing. You can make brick. You can make bricks out of hemp. They're very, they're, they're amazing. Hemp bricks are amazing. They're light, they're, with, they're, they're, they're flame retardant, you know, they're difficult to burn down. So you should be having, this whole thing should be made out of, okay, never mind, leave that alone. Okay, let's start all over again. My name is Anthony John Sloan, okay? And I, I was born and raised in the South Bronx of New York City. I was born and raised in the South Bronx of New York City. Now, there's an Anglo group meaning of my name. Anthony means incomparable, no comparison. I'm unique. Hey. Sloan means warrior. You know, warrior. Beat you up, blah, 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 right? John, that middle name, is like a slave name. But John was always a smart slave. He made like he was dumb, but he was smart. He could read, but he didn't acknowledge that, okay? I give you all that background just to get you to this point here. My, uh, as, as, a, as a, let's call me a, an African in the diaspora. That's what they say, the diaspora, some sort of big word. It means that I'm not on the continent, I'm every place else but the continent. And we have a lot of people like us all over the place. Thank you so much. We have a lot of people like us that acknowledge our Africanness and we want, to, we, want you to, uh, we want everybody to acknowledge our Africanness because our Africanness is what has saved us. What has, has made us who we are. We're talking about people from the diaspora especially. Okay? Now what happens in, the, in this scenario that I'm putting out for you, that as a child, I come from what we call the ghetto. <laughs> the ghetto. All right? No poor, all that whole thing, you know. And also, you know, we have, uh, we have things like, uh, 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 how do you say this? Um, uh, if, if I'm going to uh, say I'm from the ghetto, it means that I have a certain culture also. Ghetto is a culture. I know people don't want it to be, but it's a culture too. Okay, now as a child of the ghetto, I've also been a, a black nationalist, right? Uh, what we call a, 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 a pan-Africanist. I was part of the black arts movement in the United States. And these are all very, what we call, I don't want to say radical movements, but they're movements that are important for our culture. It's important for everything. Now, what happens, what I, what I want you to focus on, as far as what I'm speaking about, has to do with, I guess we, we, we would call it, um, how do we carry on being African in this, this time and space, okay? Especially when we have a situation where I say, for instance, I want everybody, I, w I would like uh, the uh, African Union, I think they're working on this, to make sure the people in the diaspora they have some sort of bona fides, some sort of uh, connection to, to Africa. And the only way to do that is make sure we all have visas for the entire <coughs> continent. Great. In other words, everybody in diaspora should be able to go any place in Africa. Everybody in Africa should be, go, should be able to go any place in Africa. It has nothing to do with, with white men and whatever, whatever, whatever. This has to do with us. You know, the, the colonialists can come in and say what they want, but if you don't accept it, well, then it ain't happening. Am I right with this? So if you want a, uh, if you want a one Africa, remember everybody thinks that Africa, everybody says, well, Africa is, a, is not really a it's, a, it's a continent. Why do you keep on saying country? No, we are one. Be a continent, country. What, what do you want? I don't care what you want to call us, right? <coughs> but you have to understand 
The only way we're going to solve this thing is by being one. Being one. I know somebody's from, uh, somebody's from Lesotho, somebody's from, I don't know where we're from, but we're still one. Even if you don't speak the same language. Okay? Okay. Now I had to get that out of the way because now I got to go to what I really wanted to talk about. <laughs> Which is, uh, for me, I'm what we call a, uh, a witness traveler. The most famous witness traveler I know is this guy, an American guy. Uh, he's passed now. Uh, in fact, I shook his hand one time. I shook a lot of people's hands, right? All right and um, and what he what he did, just James Baldwin. We're talking about James Baldwin. What he did, he witnessed a lot of things, and he wrote them down. He traveled a lot of places, and he wrote things down. So he's a witness traveler. I'm in that tradition of being a witness traveler. Okay? Now... There's only two things I want to leave you with. I'm going to be short. I'm going to leave you with only two things. As a witness traveler and seeing things and meeting a lot of people. And guess what? Oh, I have to tell you something you, you probably won't understand. You don't know. Black Panthers. Woo! My man. <laughs> oh, man. Look at that. Hey, Marcus Garvey, the Black Panther Party for self-defense. Man is heavy. Man is heavy. <laughs> but, uh... uh like I said, I've t I've sh I've, I shook the hand of Thomas and Carter. Really, I'm serious. I took 1980s. He was up in New York. I'm recording. I met him. You shook hands. If you shake, if you touch me, it means you touch Thomas and Carter. That's what it means. I'm telling you. That's right. When I was at University of uh, at, 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 uh, University of Cape Town, right? There's this famous uh, guy here a long time ago that went to University of Cape Town, an American. Right? And since he went there, I feel like I have a connection to him. Anytime you in the same room as somebody, you have a connection to that person. Okay. So what I wanted to really leave you with is that there's a, there's a couple of, uh, of things that we need to know. Like, first of all, we, we need energy. Everybody says we need energy. There's this thing called wave power. Wave power. Now, what we have in Southern Africa, we have... The Indian Ocean and the Atlantic Ocean, two oceans meeting. They have this wave, they have power. And, we, and, and somehow somebody's got to say, hey, let's make something so we can capture all this wave power and save us some, some energy, some coal energy, whatever. We got you know, to save some energy. And wave power is one way to do it. Okay, so just, just, just so you know that. One last thing, this has to do, this, that was energy. One last thing, this has to do with what I call, there's a thing called Li-Fi. There's a thing called Wi-Fi. You know Wi-Fi, there's a radio waves, and you know, you get free, whatever, Li-Fi. Li-Fi is light waves. Now with light waves, what this, how this can help South Africa especially, is if you have light waves, that these things are faster than, than, than radio waves, which means you can get your internet a lot faster with, with, with Li-Fi. Now what this means for us in Southern Africa, is if every, if we if we had if all the static had Li-Fi, that means they can have this energy. They can have free, uh, 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 what do you call that? Internet, because that's what Li-Fi can give you. Free internet. We just have to pay for your little phone, whatever have you. If all the static pays for pays for this, this means that if you're a if you're a goat herder in Lesotho, you can contact somebody in Peru and find out what's happening with goats and improve that that would help you out you understand so what I'm saying to you is that our education future education depends on who can talk to who in the on the planet so you don't have to worry about schooling you know if you want to go to university go ahead to university if you don't you can just get on your, your device and hey you can learn how to be a goat herder in Lesotho by sitting here in South Africa or wherever it happens so I just want to leave you with that I need you to understand all this. It's just little little things. I didn't want to make it a, a, a big thing for you. So just understand that we are in a situation that we can actually propel the world. We can propel the world in a direction that is not beholden to the colonizers. Let's put it that way. Okay. Thank you for this.